Hey guys, and welcome to a new weekly reading vlog. So I don't know why, but lately I have been feeling kind of slumpy, both when it comes to reading, but also in terms of content creation. I haven't really been in the mood to read or to pick up my camera and film some videos, which is one of the reasons why I've been so inconsistent so far this year. But this week I thought we would turn things around and get some reading done and read whatever the hell I wanted because I do have some themed TBRs planned, but since I'm feeling kind of slumpy, I don't think it's the right moment to dive into those. So this week I'm just going to go with the flow and hopefully get back into groove both in terms of reading and in terms of content creation. So today is Saturday. I'm kind of starting this vlog on a random day, but I was supposed to film a reading vlog for the Basically Readathon hosted by Basically Brit. I love participating in that 24 hour readathon, but today was kind of like not the best day for me because I had to edit a video this morning and then um, I went out with a friend for lunch and the readathon started at noon, but you know, lunch was at around that time. So I didn't get to read then. And now it's about three almost 4 p.m. and I have not even started reading my book. So I think I'm just going to incorporate the footage that I would have filmed for the vlog into this one. So we're going to turn it into a week-long reading vlog. So the challenge of the Basically Readathon is to read a book that's been on your TBR forever. I was going to do a whole video on Dark Academia because I have been in the mood to read Dark Academia and I was going to read If We Were Villains by ML Rio. Now I don't think I'm going to be doing like a Dark Academia 24-hour readathon or anything like that, but I still want to read this book because it has been on my TBR for a while. I have actually acquired very recently. If you watched my last weekly reading vlog, you will see that I got this like about a month ago, like a couple of weeks ago, but it has been on my Goodreads TBR ever since it came out. Basically, I have seen so many people talk about this book and I've been wanting to read it. And now it's the perfect time for me to read it. I have heard great things about this one and some mixed reviews. So I'm looking forward to see what I think about this one. And I think we're gonna start it today. I don't know if we're gonna be finishing it in 24 hours like I was supposed to, but this is the first book that we're gonna be reading this week. Now I'm actually actually participating in, well, I'm tuning in for a live reading sprints hosted by uh, Sabine and Lexi. Right now we're supposed to be sprinting, but I wanted to kick off this vlog because I haven't really gotten the opportunity to do that today. And um, I'm gonna start reading my book. <laughs> friends. So today is Sunday and I thought it was time for a reading update. So yesterday I read a little bit of If We Were Villains by Emma Rio. I made it to page 34 so I didn't manage to read as much as I wanted to. Not because the book is not interesting or anything like that. It just wasn't my day yesterday. Like I had slept terribly the night before and I had like such short temper and a short attention span and I just didn't want to read. I read during the reading sprints a little bit even though I didn't read as much as I wanted to because of my short attention attention span. Like I said, at night I wanted to pick up the book again, but I was feeling so tired after I had gone to the grocery store with my mom. So instead I just watched some YouTube videos and went to bed at like 9 or 9.30. So I just didn't really feel like reading and so I didn't read that much. But I am interested so far. Um, we're following a group of Shakespearean actors and I believe a murder gets committed. I don't know how, I don't know when, but um, it's interesting. But I haven't really read a lot, so there's not a lot that I can give you right now on my thoughts and opinions. I don't really have any because I haven't read enough of the book to form an opinion yet. And then today I finished editing a video, I uploaded that, and then I decided to watch YouTube for most of my morning. But this afternoon I decided to read Every Exquisite Thing by Cassandra Clare and Maureen Johnson. So I had kind of forgotten that I had this audiobook. I also have the ebook copy of it, and so I listened to the audiobook and read the ebook at the same time. But as I was saying, I had kind of forgotten that I had that 
because, I don't know, I don't listen to audiobooks as much anymore since we are quarantined. Since the beginning of the pandemic, I haven't really taken the time to listen to audiobooks unless I own the physical copy as well and I can read alongside it. But yeah, I kind of forgotten that I had that, but I have seen a lot of people talk about the Shadowhunter Chronicles because of the recent release of Chain of Iron. So I thought that I would continue reading a little bit of Ghost from the Shadow Market. So that's what I did. I listened to every exquisite thing and it was amazing. I'm giving this story a five out of five stars. I did not know that Anna Lightwood was a queer character and it just warms my heart. Like this story was just so heartwarming and even though like it's not necessarily a happy ending, it just, I don't know. I, I really enjoyed it. I really loved the whole like coming at terms with who you are storyline and everything. I just really enjoyed it. It made me tear up a little bit and the audiobook was really amazing. It's narrated by Laura Pulver who plays um, Irene Adler in Sherlock and I'm obsessed with her voice so I really enjoyed that and yeah it was amazing. It really makes me want to pick back up the Shadowhunter Chronicles because to be honest like I have stopped reading the books for a while. I haven't been in that universe in a while. After I read Lord of Shadows I was super excited for the release of Queen of Air and Darkness and I own a copy and everything but I just haven't really picked it up again so I haven't really read anything new from the Shadowhunter Chronicles series but everyone's been talking about Chain of Iron and I'm like okay maybe I should continue reading the Shadowhunter Chronicles so yeah really enjoyed it highly recommend and it's a great way to like pump up my Goodreads challenge because I'm super behind on like five or six books behind schedule but reading like the novellas is a great way to like get a lot of books in so we like that right now I am about to go to the gym it's such a snowy day and I kind of don't want to go but at the same time I know I'll feel a lot better after going one of the best things about being out of lockdown is that I'm able to go to the gym again yes we have to wear a mask and everything but I would much rather be able to work out at a gym and wear my mask than not be able to go at all so I am going to try to motivate myself and go I am wearing my workout clothes but it was cold so that's why I'm wearing this blanket Good morning everyone, happy Monday. I have a reading update for you guys. So yesterday I read up to page 79 of If We Were Villains, which means that I have finished act one. And oh my God, that last scene, wow. I am so excited to see where things will go from here because we're already starting to see some tension within the group. So I'm quite curious to see how things will evolve from there. I'll be honest, there's one thing that I wish I knew before diving into this. It's very Shakespeare heavy, which you would expect given the fact that they are Shakespeare Shakespearean actors and they're studying Shakespeare. There are so many discussions about Shakespeare's various plays and I've only read uh, Romeo and Juliet, um, Othello, and uh, Much Ado About Nothing, but they talk about Macbeth and Julius Caesar and I kind of wish that I had read those plays. I think I would appreciate the discussions in here a lot more if I had like read those plays or at least was familiar with them, but I'm still very much enjoying it, like the mystery aspect of it. Like we know something has happened, we just don't know what it is yet. So I'm quite curious to see where things will go from here. So far I love the characters, especially the male characters for the most part. There's one that I hate, but I think it's like the author makes it so that you hate him. Um, and the female characters, I feel like we don't know them as much as a male characters, probably because our narrator doesn't interact with the female characters as much as he does with the male characters. Also, last night I started watching WandaVision. Now, I initially was not going to watch it because it honestly wasn't really appealing to me. Like, it's not something that I was interested in. I don't know, like the sales and like the story, it didn't seem like something I would enjoy. But um, seeing how the Falcon and the Winter Soldier comes out on Friday and with the MCU everything tends to be connected so you kind of have to watch one thing in order to be able to watch the others. I feel like those two stories will be independent but I'm afraid that they will spoil the show or maybe they'll mention something that happens in WandaVision and I'll be confused because I haven't watched it. So I decided to give it a try and um, I'll be honest I don't really get what all the hype is about. Like I watched the first four episodes and three of them are like sitcom like episodes and this is kind of what I was afraid of like that I would really care about that and that's still the truth like I don't really care about it like it's nice it's fun but I'm like okay so what but now the fourth episode wow this is where the game changed for me um I knew Darcy Lewis and Jimmy Woo were gonna be part of the show and this is kind of one of the reasons why I decided to watch because oh, I love these characters so much I know they're side characters but I love them and I was so excited to see them in the show and on episode four this is where it connects with 
our timeline like the MCU and um, reality I guess so um, this is where like I got invested and where things got interesting in my opinion but yeah I'm excited to continue watching it I'm trying to finish it before the Falcon and the Winter Soldier comes out so before Friday but there's only like nine episodes and most of them are between like 30 and 40 minutes so I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be able to finish that by then because I'm already like halfway through the show So I just finished my work day and I have some book mail. So I've mentioned lately that I have been in a kind of reading slump. I feel like this slump has hit me back and I hate it. But one thing that really helps me getting out of a reading slump is reading rom-com. So adult romances, but that are more like on the comedy side. So I realized that I didn't really have any of those. I think I only have one and I didn't really want to read it right now like it was not something that I was in the mood for so I decided to buy a couple on indigo chapters which means that I kind of broke my book buy and ban but then I realized that on Friday the day that I ordered these it was actually my booktube anniversary so it's my third year here on booktube so I guess this is kind of a little gift to celebrate by the way before I unbox this I was wondering if you guys wanted to see anything special for the booktube anniversary I was not planning on celebrating it but if you guys would like to see it I don't know a Q&A, a giveaway, or something like that, or maybe like a completely different video, let me know in the comments down below. I don't really know what I would do, but if you have any specific requests in that regards, let me know in the comments down below. But now let's unbox them. I believe there's gonna be two books in this one, and I have a third package that should arrive later on this month. So let's see if I can do this. Oops. <laughs> Woo! Oh wow, they're beautiful. Okay, so the first that I have here is Accidentally Engaged by Farah Heron, and this cover is beautiful. I actually had an arc of this, but I didn't read the arc on time. I don't know why I keep repressing arcs, because I don't even have a device to read my arcs on right now. Like, my e-reader is so old that I can't really sync with the arcs that I have, and my iPad won't even, like, download because it's so freaking old. But anyway, that's another story for another day. I had an arc of this and I was so excited to read it, but I never really got around to reading it. And I believe there's like fake dating involved. Um, there's also a baking situation involved as well. It says, is this fake engagement? Ooh, even better. Foolproof or half-baked? Oh, I like this. So yeah, I'm excited to read it. I don't know too much about the plot of it, but it sounded really interesting, so I'm excited to give it a try. I believe also the main character is Muslim. And then I had to get one of my favorite books of 2020 because I had an arc and I read it on time, but I didn't have a physical copy of it. And I have been meaning to reread this book, and that is Boyfriend Material by Alexis Hall. Oh my God, you guys, I love this book so much. And it is so beautiful, like, oh my God. Oh, and I love the chapter headers. I had forgotten about that. I don't know if like the arc at it, but I don't know. I'm obsessed. I love this book. And recently they announced that there's going to be a sequel for it, which I'm like so excited about. I legit screamed when I found out that there was going to be a sequel. But oh my God, I'm so excited. I want to reread it. And the queen, Talia Hibbert, has mentioned recently that she wanted to reread Boyfriend Material. And I was like, yes, that is the right decision. And this is what I should be doing as well. So I ordered it and I am so excited. Oh my God, I love this book. Oh my God. Like, look at this illustration. I am obsessed. Hello, it is Wednesday and I didn't really vlog yesterday because quite frankly, Tuesday was pretty much a repeat of Monday, meaning I worked, I went to the gym, I read, and I watched WandaVision. So I didn't really see a point in updating you guys because I didn't really have much to share. But today is Wednesday and I have some news. So first, I finished watching WandaVision and I kind of want to talk about it a little bit, but I'll stay brief because I know some of you guys don't care and also some of you guys don't want to get spoiled, which 
totally valid and I get that. I enjoyed it. It's not my favorite thing that I've seen in the MCU, but I liked it and I liked how it opened the door to more possibilities, especially with that ending. I feel like it wasn't like a nice ending all wrapped up in a bow. I think it left some crumbs that we can use um, in other films and just other things. I don't know if it'll be renewed or anything, but what we saw in WandaVision will be featured in other pieces of the MCU. For example, um, that's not a spoiler or anything. It's actually, it's been announced, but Wanda will be part of the second Doctor Strange movie. So I guess that TV show will, the story that is showed will play a part in the one that we see in that movie. Also, really love Wanda's new costume. Not gonna spoil it, but I stan. I really like it. And overall, I think it was a great show. I enjoyed watching it. I don't get the hype, to be honest. Like, I feel like it's kind of overhyped, but I did enjoy it. I thought it was great, and um, I'm now really looking forward to watching The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, which comes out on a Friday, and I'm so excited for that one because Captain America is probably my favorite franchise in the MCU, so I cannot wait to see something else set within that universe. Unfortunately, Chris Evans is not part of the show, but who knows? Who knows? Maybe he'll come back, but yeah. Anyway, also I have been making some progress with If We Were Villains. I am currently on page 278, so I have less than 100 pages to read. I'm still super intrigued. It's kind of different from what I was expecting, but I, I don't really know how to talk about it without spoiling it, so I won't talk too much about it, but I am enjoying it. I just feel like there's not really much happening, but I feel like this is a kind of book where everything will be revealed in the last act in this case. I love how it's kind of formatted as a play, like it's a novel, but instead of being chapters, there's scenes and um, acts, and I don't know, I feel like it kind of reads like a play in a sense, so I enjoyed that aspect of it. All right, so I finished it, and uh, I think I'm going to give it a four out of five stars. It was amazing. Like, the ending just took me completely by surprise. I was shattered. I was heartbroken. I was gasping. It was really incredible, and I totally see why a lot of people love it. However, um, I have to admit that the reason why I cannot give it a five out of five stars is that I think this is meant to be for people who love theater and love Shakespeare. And as someone who didn't grow up studying Shakespeare, I mean, being a French speaker, the pieces of literature that we studied during my education years, I guess, my education, were French pieces of literature. And so I have read a couple of Shakespeare's plays throughout the years, but I haven't read all of them. And so I feel like I'm not the main audience for this. And I feel like there's a lot of nuances that I missed because sometimes the main characters or just the characters in general, they spoke to each other in lines from the plays. They play such a big part in the story and just the way the characters interact with one another that um, I feel like I couldn't totally grasp everything that the author was trying to convey. And I feel like a lot of people that are more well-versed in Shakespeare, but also in theater, would appreciate this a lot more than I did. So this is why I'm giving it a four out of five stars, but it was so good. And I think nonetheless, even if like me, you're not too familiar with Shakespeare's plays, you would still enjoy this because the mystery aspect of it was really good. I did not know who the murderer was until we found out who they were. I enjoyed it. I would recommend it. I think it would be a great book to read during the fall season. Like the Dark Academia vibes were amazing. I really loved the dynamics between all of the characters. I think it was interesting seeing how they started off as such a close-knit group and they ended up falling apart completely. And it's hard for me to talk about this without spoiling it, but it was really good. And uh, I can see why a lot of people love it because it was truly amazing. The writing is great. I have also decided on my next read and we're doing it. We were reading Boyfriend Material by Alexis Hall. Ever since I saw Talia Hibbert tweet about this, and I don't know why, but lately I have been in the mood to reread it because they announced a sequel and then I saw that tweet and I'm just like, you know what? Let's do it. Let's reread it. I'm so excited. You guys, this was one of my favorite books of 2020. Maybe one of my favorite books of all time and I'm just so excited to be rereading it. And this copy, like it's been staring me in the face this whole week and I am really looking forward to rereading it. So tonight we're going to start this. Hi. So, uh, today's Thursday. <laughs> and it's been a fucking day. So I woke up this morning at like 4.30 a.m. because my dog was barking for no reason whatsoever. And uh, I got up, I had to like put her outside and then she would still bark for no reason. So I'm the type of person who once I get up, 
I can't really go back to sleep. So I try to go back to bed, but I wasn't able to fall asleep. So I was watching some ASMR videos. And at the time I started falling asleep, my alarm went off, obviously. So I had to get out of bed and get ready for the day. And I was feeling so tired. Like I felt like, I don't know, I felt like I was sick or I had been like hit by a truck and I just was recovering. I don't know, but I was not feeling well. But I could not really like cancel on today because I was training a client. So I couldn't really uh, take the day off, you know? And then like work was supposed to be not busy today. I started work a little bit earlier because I had some things that I wanted to get out of the way. I feel like everything just snowballed. I got asked uh, to help with a video, which I was already supposed to do, but um, it's a very last minute thing. And then I had my training with my client and then I had uh, other things on my plate. Basically, I feel like it snowballed and I had like a lot of things that were thrown at me. Anyway, now it's 4.30. My work day is over. I'm supposed to go to the gym with my mom. Anyway, you're here for the book updates. So I started reading boyfriend material yesterday. Also, I'm dumb and I forgot to tell you how far into it I am. So I'm currently on page 196, which means that I'm a little bit under halfway. Now back to your regular programming. It was hard for me to put it down. Like I'm reminded why I love this book so much. I was in my bed last night and I was laughing and laughing because this book is freaking hilarious. Like it's absolutely incredible. I love this so much. It's like, like I said, one of my favorite books of 2020 and probably one of my favorite books of all time and we're reading it. It just solidified that. I am loving this so much and I am so looking forward to getting back from the gym tonight and like reading. This is how much I'm enjoying this. Like I'm looking forward to the moment I will be picking up this book again. And I love the chemistry between our two main characters, like Oliver and Luke are such um, opposites. It's kind of like an opposite attracts situation because Luke is He's like a hot mess. He's very chaotic and he's so funny. He's the narrator of the story and I love him. Like the amount of times that I've said, I love this man while reading this book is like, yeah. And Oliver is like the complete opposite of that. He's very uh, straightforward and very organized and kind of like type A. It's so funny seeing them interact because they're so different. But yeah, I'm having an amazing time. I cannot wait to continue reading it. Oh, I'm in love with this book. Happy Friday. I am so glad that the work week is now over. I don't know why I felt like this was such a long week, but it felt pretty average at the same time. Yesterday, I finished reading Boyfriend Material by Alexis Hall, and this is obviously getting a five out of five stars. It was so good. I loved it so much. I feel like the tone in the second half of the book kind of shifts a little bit. Like it's still funny, don't get me wrong, but I feel like we touched on more real stuff. We really go through a lot deeper things in the second half of the book and we really get to see the character development for both of our protagonists, which I thought was so interesting. I love this book. So I'm so excited to be seeing a sequel because I love the two main characters. Also, I have some new book mail. I already unboxed it. So I'm just going to show you the book, but it is Actor Age Eve Brown by Talia Hibbert. And I am so pumped. If you guys didn't know, this is one of my most anticipated releases for 2021 and this is the last book in the uh, brown sisters trilogy and this one i believe um uh, it's kind of like an enemy to lover situation i know there's a bed and breakfast involved i don't know too much about the plot but i am really excited because i've loved both of the books in the series so far and talia hibbert is one of my favorite romance authors so cannot wait to read it i've heard nothing but incredible things about this one so i'm so pumped look at this beautiful cover i love the colors it makes it very um, spring. I don't know. I really like it. But now as it is 4 p.m. I think I'm going to go watch The Falcon and the Winter Soldier because I think it's like out and it's on Disney Plus. So I'm going to go watch that. So I just finished watching The Falcon and the Winter Soldier and it was really good. I thought it was a good introduction to the show. I'm excited to see where things will go and everything. I won't talk too much about it because I know some of you guys don't care, but I also don't want to spoil anyone. But I really enjoyed it. Like the ending, oh my God, I'm excited to see where things will go next. The things that I hate with series is like having to wait a full week to be able to watch another episode. I love binging. So like having to wait pisses me off a bit. But other than that, we're good. Anyway, right now I kind of want to pick my next read and I don't really know what I want to go for. I don't know what I'm in the mood for. I'm like, do I want to continue one of the books that was on 
am I currently reading? So the stuff that I've already started, like Persuasion by Jane Austen or Anxious People by Frederick Bachman. Do I want to continue reading the Ghost on the Shadow Market um, novellas? Uh, do I want to start a new rom-com? Do I want to read something else? I don't know what I want to read and that pisses me off. So I don't really know. I think I'm going to try to like maybe go through my physical TBR, see what might be appealing. Maybe I'll do a, like a try chapter tag or something or I'll just go with my gut. Maybe I'll watch some booktube to help me um, get motivated to pick up something. I don't know. We'll see. I I hate the feeling of like having to choose something else to read because sometimes I don't know what I want to read but I know I want to read like it is a case right now. So I'll think about it a little bit and I'll come back and tell you what I decided to pick. Merchants Bazaar. Pay only what you can afford in Enter Fairyland. See what you most desire. All welcome. Mm -hmm. 